We are now in the closing stretch. And Kamala has a couple of closing arguments, and they're both fake. So Kamala closing argument, number one, she's still trying to do the brat routine. And as we discussed, Kamala Harris is a total empty suit. Ain't nobody excited about Kamala Harris. Seriously, I know tons of Democrats. None of them are like, oh my God, she is so fetch. She is so brat. I'm still feeling the joy. Listen, you know what that joy was? That joy was the glee that you got away with murdering the current president of the United States politically. That is the, that is the joy that you felt. That moment of just ecstasy that you felt when you realized that Joe Biden was not going to be the nominee, it was not about Kamala Harris. It was about not Joe Biden. That's what that was. But she's still trying to do it. She's still trying to make fetch happen. So on Saturday night, she did a surprise cold open in violation of FCC regulations, actually, on Saturday Night Live. And it was, predictably, not good. Not good at all. So here she was doing the routine on Saturday Night She is so bad. At, God, she's bad at this. She's so bad at this. This is it, the last campaign stop in Pennsylvania. Gosh, I just, I wish I could talk to someone who's been in my shoes, you know? A black South Asian woman running for president, preferably from the Bay Area. <laughs> oh my God, she's awful. Oh, she's so terrible. Can you imagine these cackles for like four years? Can you imagine it? Maya Rudolph is less insufferable. Wow. They're still laughing, still grinning crazily. Boy, is she, she's so awkward. She's just awkwardness embodied in a human being. Goodness gracious. You and me both, sister. <laughs> it is nice to see you, Kamala. It is nice to see you, Kamala. And I'm just here to remind you, you got this. Because you can do something your opponent cannot do. You can open doors. Wow, this is hilarious. This is hilarious stuff. Top notch. Top notch comedy writing. I see what you did there. Like to a garbage truck, right? <laughs> <laughs> I don't really laugh like that, do I? Yeah, it's much worse. A little bit. <laughs> now, Kamala, take my Pamela. Oh, they're going to do rhymes. The American people want to stop the chaos and end the drama. Rhymes, wow. With a cool new stepmamala. <laughs> Kick back in our pajamas and watch a rom Kamala. Like legally blondela. <laughs> and start so decorating for Christmas. Fala la la la. <laughs> because Good what man. do we always say? Keep Kamala and carry on a la. <laughs> Oh, no. Oh, so many awkward vibes. Oh. I can't take it anymore. I can't, I can't, I can't, I can't. No, 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 no more. Let's make it stop. Make it stop. Make it stop. I think a lot of Americans are going to think that, you know, when they get into the actual voting, but they're going to make it stop. Just make it stop. Whatever you do, make it stop, please. It actually has vibes of 2016. So I don't know if you recall this, but back in 2016, there was a full-scale SNL tribute to Hillary Clinton right before the election. In retrospect, one of the most hilarious things that ever happened on TV. At the time, it was insufferable. Now it's hilarious. Just like that tweet where she said, happy birthday to this future president. Here, you'll recall, it was Kate McKinnon as Hillary Clinton singing Hallelujah. There was nothing funny about it, except that now, in retrospect, since she lost to Donald Trump, it's one of the funniest things that ever happened in the history of Earth. Heard there was a secret chord that David played and it pleased the Lord. But you don't really care for music, do you? Oh, no. Hallelujah. Oh, boy. That was actually right after Hillary lost. I'm not giving up, and neither should you. Oh, yeah, yeah. And live from New York at Saturday night. So bad, so bad. And you can see Kate McKinnon was basically trying not to cry at the time. Well, folks, using the internet without ExpressVPN is like leaving your keys in the car while you run into the gas station for a quick snack. Most of the time, probably fine. What if you come back outside and somebody is driving off in your car? Let's talk about something serious. Every single time you connect to an unencrypted network, cafe, hotel, airport, any hacker on that same network can gain access to your personal data. We're talking passwords, financial details, all the things. And folks, isn't some sophisticated operation requiring a degree in computer science. 
The terrifying reality is that with just some cheap hardware, even a smart 12-year-old could do it. Your data is incredibly valuable. Hackers can make up to 1000 bucks per person selling personal information on the dark web. That's exactly why I used ExpressVPN. It creates that secure encrypted tunnel between your device and the internet, making it impossible for hackers to steal your sensitive data. When I say secure, I mean secure. It would take a hacker with a supercomputer over a billion years to get past ExpressVPN's encryption. The best part, it's incredibly easy to use. You just fire up the app, you click one button, and now you're protected. It works on all your devices. We're talking phones, laptops, tablets, everything. I use it every single day, especially when I'm traveling for speeches and have to use hotel Wi-Fi. In today's world, you can't afford not to protect yourself online. That would be a dumb move. Instead, secure your online data today. Scan the QR code on screen, click the link in the description, or visit expressvpn.com slash Ben Shapiro Show. By visiting my special link, you'll get an extra three months of ExpressVPN service for free. And who doesn't like to save money, right? And that's expressvpn.com slash Ben Shapiro Show. expressvpn.com slash Ben Shapiro Show to protect your data today. Well, it turns out that this was in violation of law. You can't just give one candidate right before an election a bunch of airtime. Brendan Carr, who is the former GOP commissioner of the FCC, said this is a clear and blatant effort to evade the FCC's equal time rule. The purpose of the rule is to avoid exactly this type of biased and partisan conduct. A licensed broadcaster using the public airwaves to exert its influence for one candidate on the eve of an election, unless the broadcaster offered equal time to other qualifying campaigns. Well, yeah, it is a violation. So that meant that actually the network had to offer the same time to Donald Trump. So Donald Trump put together a one minute response ad that looked something like this. Hello to our great sports fans, and I hope you're having a fantastic time. We're two days away from the most important election in the history of our country. We've got to save our country, and it needs saving. It's in very bad shape. The worst economic numbers in generations were just announced two days ago. We're losing jobs. We're losing everything, including viability. We're going to end up in a depression based on what's been happening. We've never seen anything like it, at least for the last 40 years. We have to straighten out our country. We have to close our borders. We have to lower our taxes. We have to get rid of inflation. And we're going to do it. Just remember, Kamala and her friends broke it. I'll fix it. Most important election in the history of our country. Go and vote. That's that's a that is the essence of the Donald Trump argument. And, you know, it's a pretty good argument. But here's the thing. Her closing argument is, number one, that she is incredibly brat. So brat. Unbelievably brat. Right. That's why she trotted out, for example, Cardi B to do an endorsement. So, I mean, whatever you do, don't go on Twitter and try to find the video of her talking about particular techniques, shall we say. Let's just say that Cardi B is the least appropriate person to ever do a presidential endorsement, and it ain't particularly close. She actually had an awkward moment where her teleprompter went out. Cardi B without this teleprompter, man, she is just lost. I mean, she is gone. And so she stood there for fully one minute saying nothing before somebody realized they had to bring her a thing to try to read from. Because again, I don't think she reads very well either. Here was, here was Cardi B's endorsement. Again, this is so brat. It's so hot. It's so joy. Or alternatively, it's so forced. I'm not giving Donald Trump a second chance. No, nope. I'm not taking any chances with my future and not damn sure and taking no chances with the future of my children. All three of them. All three of them. I'm not giving him the chance. You're not giving him the chance. Yeah. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. I'm with Kamala. I believe in her. A closer from the woman most famous in America, for performing. I believe in you to turn out on Tuesday. I can't. I turn can't. out and uh, turn they're, they're up so on insufferable. Tuesday. You want this? You really turn want this? Turn the page and let's win this thing. Oh, good. So the, the lady who is, is most famous for uh, performing particularly sexual acts with Megan Thee Stallion live on stage at the Video Music Awards. Uh, that, that one, that one. But don't worry, it's not just her. Apparently, Kamala Harris will be joined by an array of superstars on Monday evening at her final rallies in Philadelphia and Pittsburgh. Katy Perry, who has outlived her usefulness. Katy Perry is aging like Joe Biden. Andra Day and D-Nice, I didn't even know those were humans, are performing at her rally in Pittsburgh. I'm sure that D-Nice, that was his given name or her name. I don't know who that is. In Philadelphia, the campaign said there will be performances or remarks. I love that. Performances or remarks. They're just going to fool you again. They're going to, by Lady Gaga. So Lady Gaga is not going to perform. Lady Gaga, like, we're going to bring forth musicians to say things, which is the last thing you want from musicians. You don't want them talking. You want them singing. They already did this with Beyonce. So you're going to get Lady Gaga, Fat Joe, as opposed to his brother, Skinny Joe, 
Ricky Martin, who was last relevant in what, 1998? The Roots, Freeway, Just Blaze, DJ Jazzy Jeff, DJ Cassidy, Jasmine Sullivan, and Adam Blackstone. Uh, I must be old. I have no idea who any of those people are, but that's definitely going to move the woke young vote in Philadelphia and Pittsburgh. Right? Th th this is where she is. Okay, so again, fake closer number one. She's brat. She's joy. She's got it going on. Okay, and then there's fake closer number two. She is all about togetherness. Do you understand? Togetherness. You will have unity and you will love it. Now, I might have believed this in 2020 if I was a fool when Joe Biden said it. You remember Joe Biden tried to run the same campaign. He was going to bring us, bring us all together, Emily. That's a mind that together. I always had that unity. And then five minutes later, he's like, anybody who's super ultra, super duper, pooper, scooper, MAGA is a traitor. Firing squad launched into uh, garbage. It's like, oh, that's what you meant by unity. What you meant by unity is we should all just do what you want us to do. Are you tired of the lies and the twist of the mainstream media talking points? Yeah, me too. Join me in my newest series, Fact, where I dismantle and bring truth to this tiring mainstream agenda. <laughs>